Good morning, greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more, more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with, nutritional supplements, ingredients, formulations, our true skin health products, 844-236-6010 is our number. And if you'd like to contribute to the conversation or you have a success story you'd love to share, you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products advertised or recommended, head to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. We've got news stories, blog posts, videos, the longevity products, also a sign up button. If you want to sign up to join the Brightside Ben team for a one time $25 fee, you can start a longevity business. If you want to make some extra money, work out of your home. If you're an entrepreneur, entrepreneur, you like the entrepreneur lifestyle where you make your own hours, you work. In your PJs, if you want to, you come and go as you please. You can write off your tax benefits. There's so many reasons why being an entrepreneur, as hard as it is, as as uh, it's not for everybody. I will say that the entrepreneur lifestyle is not for everybody, but there's a huge upside. And if this sounds good to you, you really want to check out the Longevity Business Opportunity for $25. You can be in business. Check it out at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. Also like to remind you to please check out our Truth Treatment products at truthtreatments.com, all loaded with vitamin C as well as retinol and our Truth Retinol 5% gel for aging skin, blemished skin, dark spots. Retinol is your go-to skin lightener, by the way, folks. There's nothing, nothing, nothing that will get rid of dark spots more effectively than retinol, period. Even hydroquinone, which is the gold standard, doesn't work as well as retinol in my experience. And of course, hydroquinone, which is the prescription skin lightener that you get if you go to a pharmacy or you go to a, a dermatologist, that stuff is nasty. Oh my God, is that a toxic chemical, hydroquinone? And I know, you know, people want to get rid of their blemishes, but boy, is that stuff toxic. Retinol works better, it's nutritional, and it's anti-aging to boot. You can check out all our Truth Treatment products at truthtreatments.com, Retin Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, Truth Transdermal Sea Balm, and the award-winning Harper's Bazaar loaded Truth Transdermal Sea Serum, one of the top 150 products in the world. They're all at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Free shipping, by the way, for the month of December. Okay, so we're talking about fluoride, and I know I've been talking about it for a while, and there's just so much to talk about here. Technically, fluoride is the is the um, the ionic or the electrically charged version of the element fluorine, like bromine, iodine, iodine, chlorine. These are all active substances on the periodic table that are called halogens. Chlorine and iodine are very important for the body. Bromine, possibly. 
fluorine, fluoride, I should say, not fluorine, but fluoride, uh, the non-electrically charged version, may be important for the body too. In certain forms, it's considered to be a, well, some, some researchers will call it an essential element. It's probably essential for growth. Animals that don't have fluoride will uh, suffer growth problems. Nonetheless, that's in nature. That's in, uh, as it's found in vegetables and in the soils. Naturally, colloidal fluoride. The halogens, which is what these classes of, uh, of elements are, are very, very reactive elements. And fluoride is the most reactive element of all the halogens, and it's the most reactive element pretty much on the entire periodic table. Fluoride reacts with everything, pretty much. There's, there, it won't react with helium, and there's a couple of gases it won't react with. But other than that, other than that, it reacts with everything. It has a pulling power, huge pulling power. It has the most pulling power of any of the elements on the periodic table, and it especially pulls pieces of electricity away from chemical reactions. That's how it works. That's how it does its damage. It pulls chemical uh, electrons, pieces of electricity, out of chemistry, and it's very disruptive and very, very nasty. The American, uh, American Council on Science and Health calls fluoride the element from hell. And they have a point. This pulling power of fluoride, it's called oxidation. And fluoride is very, very oxidizing. And it's probably, it, I don't know if it's the, but it sure is in, in the top two or three uh, uh, oxidizing elements. Oxidation is burning, and fluoride burns. It burns hot. You don't want a fluoride burn on your skin. Fluoride burns so hot, it will burn water. So don't bother putting water on your fluoride burn or fluoride fire. If you have a, a fluoride fire, you just got to turn, the, you just got to burn it. It has to burn itself out, basically. On our last program, we, we talked about cancer, fluoride's relationship to cancer. Now, according to the mainstream medical model, they're not going to tell you that they're putting cancer-causing stuff in the water. So they'll tell you it's controversial. They'll say, oh, well, there's no evidence. We don't have any good studies that show that it's cancer-causing. In 1987, the World Health Organization the International Agency for Research on Cancer determined that fluorides were, quote, non-classifiable as to their carcinogenicity, carcinogenicity in humans. That means we couldn't classify it. We don't know. That's what it means. We don't know. And they, they also say it's shown no consistent tendency. What the heck does that mean? No consistent tendency. So an inconsistent tendency. It has an inconsistent tendency to cause cancer. Uh, the, the quote is, uh, fluoride, fluoride studies have shown no consistent tendency for people living in areas with high concentrations of fluoride in the water to have cancer rates higher than those living in areas with low concentrations. So there's no consistent test tendency. There's an inconsistent tendency. Blah, blah, blah. It's nasty stuff. It definitely, I, I'm not going to say it causes cancer, but it definitely doesn't do you any good. In 1990, U.S. National Toxicology Program found that there was equivocal evidence of cancer causing of the cancer causing potential in fluoridated water in male rats according to a may 2001 article in the journal cancer causes and control boys who drank fluoride or ingested fluoride had an increased risk of bone cancer so look you don't need studies to say that this stuff is not stuff something that you really want to have in your system most of the cancer most of the uh, cancer studies by the way with fluoride are done on bone because of the, the affinity that fluoride has for calcium. That's how it works to protect your teeth. But fluoride is a deadly toxin, period. It interferes with all biochemical reactions. And while you may not have direct evidence that fluoride specifically, literally, actually causes cancer, the stress it puts on the body as a toxin certainly adds to the toxic load, which is really, that's what's really behind cancer. Cancer is a way that the body handles toxicity and nutritional deficiency. It's the way the body handles stress. A cancer, not the body, but a cell. There's no, there's no such thing as a cancer in the body. There's cellular cancer. Cancer is a, like all disease, cancer is a cell disease. And anything that stresses the cell past the, the, the straw that breaks the camel's back point is going to lead to diseases, including cancer. It's just biochemistry. All right, 844 is our number. You are listening to The Bright Side. We'll take a commercial break and come back with more good health information right after this. Don't go away. Okay, 
we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open for you if you have questions about thyroid, fluoride, iodine, challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with, a comment or success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number. We've got lines open for you, and we'll get your calls in our next segment, 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the Bright Side, please go to my website, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And if you'd like to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, you want to go to truthtreatments.com. We have free shipping on all our Truth Treatment products for the month of December. So we're talking fluoride, fluoride toxicity, added to the water for our teeth, despite the fact this stuff is really really nasty. A lot of research has been done on bone cancer, although cancer is a cell disease, as we were saying, and even though the bone, the fluoride has a special affinity for the bones, the stress that fluoride can put on cellular energy production, on the stuff that's going on in a cell. Think about it. You got this intense magnet. The best way to think of fluoride is a super, super, super intense magnet, a magnet that'll burn you. It's so intense. You imagine a magnet that's so strong that it would burn you? That's what fluoride is. Of course that's going to disrupt cell chemistry. Of course it's going to be toxic when something is that deadly. And of course it's going to be involved in causing of cancer, which at the end of the day is a stress on the cell, or at least the accumulation of stress on the cell. Fluoride interferes with chemistry, with biochemistry. And while there's no direct evidence that literally causes cancer, the stress itself is the problem for the cell. Fluoride has to be eliminated out of the body, but it accumulates as we ingest it. It accumulates. Fluoride is, in addition to the bone, fluoride is also toxic, especially. It's toxic to everything, but especially to the liver and the kidneys. Even the uh, American Kidney Association says you've got to be careful with fluoridated water if if you have kidney damage. And millions and millions and millions of Americans have kidney damage. It may be caused by fluoride for all we know, but I don't go that far, but it's certainly a factor. Liver toxicity and cancer is, you know, you, you can't say fluoride. You may be able to say fluoride. We don't know if fluoride directly causes cancer, but it certainly stresses the liver and it stresses the kidneys, and that can cause cancer because that's how toxicity is eliminated from the body. Cancer is about toxicity. It, cancer is a combination of toxicity and nutritional deficiency, and by nutrition, I'm also including oxygen. If you already have cancer, the way to address cancer is to. Be kind and loving to your body and by eliminating toxins, all of them, including in food, which is most food, cigarette smoke, drugs, and fluoride. And make sure you're taking all your micronutrients and your macronutrients. And, and, and as I say, breathing, I consider oxygen to be like a nutrient, vitamin O, they call it. Yesterday, we talked about the especially toxic relationship between fluoride and the gut. This is so important. How many people have digestive health issues and they can't figure out what it is? It could easily be fluoride. It's right on the package insert. There's no way that anyone can tell you that the ingestion of fluoride is not going to have an impact on your intestines, the intestinal cells, as well as the microbiome, the fluoride, or the flora, the bacterial flora that live in the gut. That means IBS. That means ulcerative colitis. That means malabsorption. That malabsorption especially. How do we know that fluoride ingestion isn't related to fat malabsorption? We know it's toxic to the gut. That means deficiencies in fatty vitamins. You see how this, once you start adding things, toxic chemicals into the system, into the body, just because it makes you not have cavities, you're opening up a Pandora's box of health challenges and diseases, all in the name of not having cavities. I have an idea. Why don't we just not eat sugar? Why why don't we, you know, indigenous cultures, Weston Price wrote a book called, uh, actually, I forgot the name of his book, but it was a classic book about uh, about the nutritional deficiencies in indigenous cultures and non how healthy indigenous cultures were uh, who didn't eat McDonald's, who didn't have processed foods. They just ate tube, tubers and roots and plants and a wild animal or, or two here and there. And what he especially noticed about these indigenous cultures that didn't eat cereal and candy and cake and processed foods, etc., what he especially noticed was they had great teeth. And this was in the 1920s. 
when everybody's teeth was, everyone's teeth were rotting out of their head. Do you know what this, the tooth situation, the dental situation was in the 19, before I should say 1940s or 1930s, 1920s? In the 19th century, oh my God, people's teeth rotted right in their heads. They didn't know about, they didn't even know about cavities, what, what caused cavities until the 1870s or 1880s. So well, Weston Price was a dentist and he wanted to check out why we were so sick. And he went to New Guinea and he watched what the tribes people were eating and they were eating uh, natural foods and they were healthy and they were strong and they didn't have diabetes and they weren't overweight and they had great teeth. That's how you want to take care of your teeth, not by putting fluoride in the water. You, if you have IBS or, or ulcerative colitis or any kind of health challenge, and if your kid does, if your kid has a digestive health challenge, like cyclic vomiting or something, that's just a terrible thing where you just keep vomiting, you can't stop vomiting. Get off the fluoride. Now, I'm not saying that's going to cure anything. I'm not saying that's the cause of everything, but it's just not good. And on top of everything else, fluoride accumulates in the body, which further highlights the silliness, the ignorance of just putting low levels in the water in the interest of reducing cavities. It's crazy. So they put low levels in the water, but Nobody knows how much is accumulating, and the doses in the water don't take into account body weight or health status or kidney function. Or Children get the same dose as adults, and someone with kidney damage or liver damage gets the same dose as a healthy person. And the dose, the amount they put in the water, has never really been correlated with how much is in the blood. We're being dosed blindly. We're being medicated blindly with no knowledge of how the stuff is actually working or how much is getting into the system, how much is getting into the blood. Even your fluoride tooth toothpaste says on it, don't swallow, but supposedly it's okay to drink the stuff in tap water and nursery, nursery water, nursery water. That one gets me. Fluoridated nursery water by Dannon, by the Walgreens. And then fluoride everywhere. Of course, fluoride's going to be everywhere. If it's in the tap water, it's going to be pretty much everywhere. Now keep in mind, fluoride is not, I know I said it before, but it's important to recognize that you're going to find these kinds of minerals in foods, colloidally, organically. The problem is the waste fluoride. Right, is a waste product, a toxic waste product. Remember, remember, it's so toxic. They, where are you going to put this stuff? It's a byproduct of aluminum. Think about the problem these, it, it, that industry has. They they got to make aluminum, right? Because we need planes and other whatever other things that aluminum does. Aluminum is a highly prized metal, light and strong. It, but the problem is, is when you're making aluminum, you get a lot of fluoride. And also mining and other things they do to disrupt uh, the locked up fluoride in the earth to uh, increase the levels of toxic fluoride. And th there's just a big problem. Fluoride is, is an industrial waste. So what are we going to do with all that stuff? Well, <laughs> put it in the water. Doesn't that make sense? No, it doesn't make sense. Fluoride's not good stuff. Stay away from it. Get an RO filter. Drink distilled water. Cost you a dollar a gallon. Drink distilled water. It's the best water going. I, I, I'd like to hear, I, every once in a while, uh, I, not so much anymore, I have to say, but for a while there, people were debating about distilled water. How distilled water leaches minerals from your bones. You don't hear that nonsense anymore. Distilled water does not leach minerals from your bones. It's hungry water. It doesn't have any minerals in it. Well, yeah, it doesn't have any minerals in it. That's probably true, but that's not a bad thing. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. On the bright side, pharmacist Ben here, and we are on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific Time, 10 to 11 Central, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. Search engines are up on both pages. If you miss a program, you can review, review, review by topic or subject matter. You can also find the longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com as well as blog stories and blog posts and news stories and videos. And you can find our truth treatment products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com, all formulated based on my 30 plus years, 34 years, going on 35 years of formulating skincare products. Many in my compounding pharmacy, my dermatological compounding pharmacy, that's where I learned how to do all this stuff is by healing the skin. Healing skin is anti-aging the skin. Everything you want in an anti-aging product is healing. If you can't take your anti-aging product and put it on a cut, 
and get it, uh, accelerate the healing, that's not an anti-aging product. That's a scam. Go take Cindy Crawford's whatever, Dr. Sawak, the melon extract, and put it on your cut and see if it heals your cut. It won't. Not to mention you'll be introducing all kinds of toxicity into that cut. TruthTreatments.com for all our Truth Treatment products. Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, Truth Transdermal Sea Balm, Truth Transdermal Sea Serum. Free shipping for the month of December. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side from the journal. We'll get your calls here in just a sec. I know we've, uh, some of you have been holding for a long time. Uh, so we'll get your calls in a second from the journal Science and Signaling. Science Signaling. Aging impairs innate immune response to the flu. Aging impairs the immune system's response to the flu virus in multiple ways, weakening resistance in older adults, according to a Yale study. And this research reveals why older people are at increased risk from illness and death from flu, researchers said. Older folks are at increased risk for everything because that's what aging is about. Aging is about losing resistance to life. We are resistant when we're young and we're vital and we're strong. We're resist, we are resistant to most bacteria and viruses and stresses and strains, at least mildly resistant. But that resistance degrades over time. I notice this in the pharmacy, how most of the people getting the drugs are the older folks. Most of the people getting the multiple drugs are the older folks. People over 65, some 70% some of people over 65 are on two or more drugs. The weakest among us, the most fragile among us, the most vulnerable, vulnerable among us are the ones who are getting most of the drugs. And then they want you to take the shingles vaccine and the flu vaccine. No, you don't need the flu vaccine. It's a dumb medical strategy. What you need to do is build your immune system, strengthen your immune system, and stop doing things that destroy the immune system. Sugar is the big problem. Processed food, of course, too. Stress. When we're under stress, our immune system, when we're under psychological stress, I should say, emotional stress, our immune system is suppressed. When we're under the stress of sugar, too much sugar, our immune system is suppressed. When we're missing vitamin C, when we're not getting enough vitamin E, when we're not getting enough of our mighty 90 essential nutrients, on top of having too much uh, psychological stress and sugar and tox food pro uh, toxins from food, food processing toxins, like fluoride, for example, the immune response is suppressed, and this it gets worse and worse over time. If you are being talked into the flu vaccine by your physician, you're much better off working on your immune system. And by the way, prescription drugs just add to the load. There is no prescription drug that is going to make you better, period. Prescription drugs cannot make you better, period. It's a lie with a capital L. It's a pharmaceutical scheme, and it's evil. They cannot make you better. They can only add to the toxic burden. Do they directly cause cancer? I can't say they directly cause cancer. I could say it's a possibility and maybe even a likelihood, but what they do do for sure is they add to the toxic load that the body has to deal with. The trick to dealing with uh, any health challenge is not to put more poison in the body, but it is to love the body, to be kind to the body as you would to a little child. You eliminate the toxicity and you nurture and support the child slash baby with good nutrition, oxygen, movement, good thoughts, spirituality, so many ways to get healthy, folks, because it's in the body's nature to do that. 844-236-6010 is our number. Shauna has been holding on for over half an hour. Hey, Shauna, what's up? Hey, good morning, Ben. I am wanting to know what makes people, after they go to sleep, like wake up at 2 o'clock. Is the system it's called in our cortisol. body that... It's called cortisol. Cortisol, which is caused from... Yeah, then most likely... All of that. But one of the things that happens, though, is the body's doing work before you, while you're sleeping. So it's burning through some energy, and, and you're, uh, you can go into uh, a low blood sugar state in the middle of the night. If you go through a low blood sugar state in the middle of the night, your cortisol will kick in, and you, you're going to wake up. Now, nightmares can do it. Anxiety can do it. Um, if you're drinking a lot of caffeine during the day, that can do it. Uh, but th the first thing I would be thinking about is a, a big hit of cortisol. Is it the middle of the night, or is it the early morning? Usually around two. Uh, two in the morning. Liver. Yeah, you may try a little bit of protein before you go to bed. Try a little bit of uh, maybe some keto, uh, some of the keto F, uh, keto FX, I, th I think it's called, or the Slender FX. A little protein powder before you go to bed. Hard boiled egg maybe before you go to bed. A little bit, not a lot. You don't want your, to be digesting a lot of food. So probably a, a little bit of protein is what I would do. 
and that can give you some sustained release energy. Protein gets turned into sugar, but it gets turned into sugar gradually. Sugar gets turned, sugar is burned quickly. Protein gets turned into sugar gradually. You might also want to try doing some pregnenolone before you go to bed or melatonin before you go to bed if you haven't done that. Um, you also maybe want to try some, something that contains tryptophan, the amino acid tryptophan, before you go to bed, or even just tryptophan, amino, the amino acid tryptophan, before you go to bed. Magnesium, maybe, before you go to bed. A GABA, GABA, before you go to sleep. But I would be looking at that spike, that whole, that whole uh, uh, drop in blood sugar in the middle of the night kind of thing, spiking your cortisol. That would be what I would do. Thank you. Thank you, Shauna. Thanks for holding, and happy holidays. You too. Okay, talk to you soon. All right, let's go to Washington State. By the way, we've got lots of lines open at 844-236-6010. And say good morning to Carol. What's up, Carol? Is that Washington Hello. State? Yeah, yeah. Okay, what's going uh, on? Good morning, thank you. Um, uh, I'll preface this by telling you first, I, I'm having a lot of problems with my with sciatica. Okay. Uh, I've had for well over a year. That's terrible. But, uh, I've had something new added now oh, that... Okay. Uh, when when I it started only in bed when I was in bed that my right arm would hurt start to hurt it start isn't that interesting the shoulder you ever and work its way down the, just Carol. like a phantom hmm? did you ever hear that song the hip bones connected to the down yeah, from the knee that's bone. what I told you about the sciatica it's all it's all connected it is all connected your body the, from the bottom of the foot to the head top of your head or to at least your neck it's all connected the skeletal really? system is connected. When you're walking, yes, really. When you're walking, if you just walk funny, if you get a, like a like a like a pee in your shoe or something, you walk funny. Eventually, you're going to end up with sciatica and then neck pain, and the whole thing's going to be thrown off. That's how delicate the system is. You know how much movement? You know how much intelligence there is in the body just to get us to walk? You know how many steps there are to take? How many? How many? How many different uh, steps are there? No pun intended. In the walking process. You gotta move. You gotta move your step on your ball, your foot, then transfer the weight to your toes, and lift the back of your leg up, and that affects the hips, and that affects the back and the lower back. You know, lower back pain is like an epidemic. So here's the deal: if you have any kind of postural health issues, you have many health strategies, and don't let them cut you open. I'd especially be getting body work. I'll tell you some good body work strategies when we come back from our break, and I'll get you some supplements too. So don't go away, Carol. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We've got lines open. We'll be back after this. Okay, we're talking to Carol in Washington about uh, sciatica and arm pain. Carol, you there? Yeah, but I wanted to know which you prefer, the, the a chiropractor or a physical therapist, because I went yeah. to a physical therapist for the same problem about eight years ago, and he used a TENS machine and some exercises, and it, it went away for like eight okay. years. Okay, well, all that, what you know, you that's body work. Machine? It's all right. It's all right. It's not going to change your life or anything. More important is the body work. Learning to what? Now, I'm guessing you're in your 50s or, or 60s, correct? Or 70. older. 70. Okay. So, you, you, so imagine if you had just been walking a little bit twisted. If you have had, say, uh, sprained your ankle when you were a kid or when you were older, or maybe had knee surgery or something, some kind of you know, broken bone somewhere, and then you start compensating, right? You start leaning to one side or you start walking a little funny. Maybe you, you, you slouch a little bit. I mean, there's all kinds of ways our body adjusts to entropy, to the, to the gravity, to the pull of the world. And over the course of time, we start to walk funny. Things start to change in our body. Then you throw in toxicity. And, and this is if you're pristine. This is if you're a monk, let alone if we're just an average American person. You throw in toxicity and the air and the fluoride and, 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 the, str and the psychological stresses and all the things that go on in our lives. Eventually, our body starts to shrivel. It starts to contract. It starts to change its shape. It goes from being young and flexible and wonderful. When you were two years old, this you did not have this problem. You you bounced out of bed. You bounced literally. You see a kid fall, they bounce. You know that's what happens. And then we don't bounce anymore. The day comes when we don't bounce. You know and we lose our bounce. So you got to get your bounce back. The main way to get your bounce back. Because remember, the body's a bunch of levers. It's a bunch of like little uh, things going, pulling and uh, pulling and pushing and contracting and relaxing and there's ratcheting. There's all these kind of lever-like, machine-like movements, and that all depends on having a healthy structural system. 
The first thing to do is get some body work. I recommend Rolfing. You ever hear that? R-O-L-F-I-N-G? Yeah. Yeah. I highly recommend Rolfing. It is not, it's not a Swedish massage. It's not all, you know, touchy-feely and soft and squishy. You will break your scar tissue up. You will break up adhesions and sticky points. And you'll feel like a million bucks when you're done. Find a good one. All right? uh, I have a, a lot of knowledge about Rolfing because Rolfing started here in Boulder, Colorado. So I know, or I know all about Rolfing. I know a lot about it. And I get, I've been getting Rolf for years. I highly recommend it. So that's the body work I recommend. Chiropractors, you know, find a chiropractor that understands how to roll, first of all. They're good ones and they're bad ones. And PT is the same way. Physical, therapist, physical therapy is the same way. And rolfing is the same way. you got to find somebody who's good. Go by references. And, you know, it's, that's the trickiest part is finding somebody who's yeah, good. Yeah, it would but, be. Uh, it would be tricky. Get, go, do your research. Where do you live in Washington? Seattle? Are you in a big city? Yeah, outside of it, yeah. yeah you'll find a million rolfers there. A million body yeah. workers there. Get body work done. And also do body work at home. Get a book on stretching. Get a book on strengthening the core. Get a book on something called the psoas muscle. That's P-C-O-A-S, I think. The psoas muscle. P-C-O-A-S. Get a book on learning how to stretch. Do yoga. Anything you could do to loosen that connective tissue. To loosen the muscle tissue. It's, it'll help you dramatically. Then you got to get on a good nutritional. Well, then you got to start eliminating anything that's pro-inflammatory. Are, are you on any medication? No. Okay, perfect, perfect. I bet you're doing great. I bet you yeah, just you. Yeah, I really am. I, so this is awesome. <laughs> you will turn. You will turn this thing around quickly. Get the body work done. Eliminate anything that's pro-inflammatory. That's sugar, especially, but also all processed food, but especially sugar. And if you have di any food that trigger digestive or digestive uh, discomfort, those that kind of food needs to be eliminated. And then get on some good supplements. The Beyond Tangy Tangerine and the vitamin C are amazing in, in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Magnesium, the Beyond Osteo FX, also very, very important. Uh, essential fats are your molecules of inflammation and anti-inflammation. And most of us don't get anywhere near the essential fats we need. Get on the ultimate EFAs. Make sure you're using glucosamine, uh, glucosamine supplements, uh, the glucogel caps. Make sure you're using extra high aluronic acid. And I'm sure you've heard of that, H-Y-A-L-U-R-O-N-I-C, high aluronic acid. Bone broth protein and bone broth together. You want to be living on it. Aloe vera, enjoy that. Anything that's got uh, polysaccharides in it, like aloe vera and also the Fucoid-Z and Fucoidin, will help stimulate the growth of connective tissue. All your strategies, this is the good, really good news here, Carol, all your strategies for building, regenerating, and helping your connective tissue in your body, for your for sciatica and uh, your arm pain, We'll keep your wrinkle. We'll keep wrinkles away too, and make your heart stronger. Also, so you get multiple benefits there. All right. I hope that helps you. Um, I so really, you really recommend the tens machine. It's certainly not. It's not in the. It's not in the same league as all the things I, I told you there. It's, it doesn't hurt. It's electrical stimulation. You know, that's not a bad thing. But it's not like body work. It's not like stretching. It's not like the mighty nine essential nutrients. It's not like laying off sugar and processed foods. That's for sure. In terms of its uh, a potency in the body, but it, it isn't going to hurt you. The TENS machine. There's more important things, though. All right, Carol? Okay, thank you God so bless much. you. Have a beautiful day. Thank we'll you. talk to you again you soon. Too. Okay, bye. All right, let's go to Michigan and say good morning to John. What's going on, John? Well, uh, doctor, I, I have to have a hernia operation, and I know okay. you have protocol for pre-surgery and post-surgery. Yes, uh, I do. What kind of hernia you got? No, it's on the left side. Uh, the inguinal? Groin. The inguinal hernia. Right. Well, you're in good company. Almost every it's very, very common. Uh, how long did how long have you had the hernia? Oh, probably for four months. I had one on the other side years ago. And okay. I had that. Are they going to do the the mesh thing? They're going to put the mesh in there. Correct. Yes. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Load up on nutrients pre-surgery and continue post-surgery. And the most important okay. ones are going to be the ones that help you build connective tissue, just like pretty much like we were just talking with uh, with Carol. Anything that helps you build connective tissue: bone broth, protein, glucosamine, the glucogel caps. Um, bone broth itself, aloe vera, hyaluronic acid, liquid silica gel by a company called Abkit. The digestive enzymes uh, will help speed the healing process up. Also, vitamin K will help prevent bruising. Vi uh, that area tends to bruise, pretty, or I don't want to say tends to, but can bruise significantly. Vitamin K2, maybe 5,000 micrograms a day. Make sure you're getting enough magnesium. Pound the vitamin C. Sip on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine all day long. And pound that vitamin C. I'd be taking extra vitamin C. You get 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C per cap full, I believe, in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. 
I would take a couple extra grams a day personally if it was me. Vitamin C, we can't build collagen without vitamin C. Stay away from anything that spikes your blood sugar, throws off your insulin. The less sugar you eat, the better off you're going to be and the faster you're going to recover. Uh, continue this whole, and if you have any foods that, that cause digestive health issues, you want to eliminate those as well. Make sure you're using um, probiotics, lots of them. Fluoride, uh, so the, the anesthetics, some of which contain fluoride, by the way. The anesthetics kill the microbiome. And you'll notice that your gut is messed up for a week or two or three after you have your after you have the anesthetic from the from the surgery. So anything you could do to support gut health is going to be important. Not so much for the surgery, but for the, well for the anesthetic, not the surgical procedure, but the anesthetic. After you have surgical procedures, by the way, your odds of having something called adhesions increase. So making sure you continue with this nutritional protocol after the surgery for a couple weeks to a month after, ideally for life, but at least for a month after, and Get body work. You may find that you're walking funny after you have your hernia. To compensate, that'll really mess things up. I would find somebody who could make who could do some body work on me maybe a month or two after you have your, your hernia surgery and you recovered. Get some body work and learn some stretching exercises and especially strengthen the core of your body. You may want to get one of those balls, those big exercise balls, and, and learn to strengthen your core. You could do great core exercises on those exercise balls. You may want to get a trainer who can walk you through some core. Do you have a trainer? No, well, I have uh, three chiropractors in the family, and, and that's a whole other sidebar. But you mentioned vitamin E and A before. Is that something? E and A, absolutely. Didn't mean to give them short shrift. MSM sulfur also is very important. Um, let's see what else I here. Do, I do uh, uh, raw milk, milk kefir every day and sauerkraut. That that's awesome. Day. That's great stuff. Keep so, doing it. And also NAC, N-acetylcysteine, anything you can do to build glutathione. Glutathione is that tripeptide, three pieces, tripeptide, three amino acids. It's got glutamine, so get on some glutamine powder. It's got cysteine. Get on uh, NAC to get your cysteine. It's got glycine. Make sure you're doing lots of good bone broth protein and bone broth. Get your glycine. Then you build glutathione, and that'll help your body heal really fast. In fact, if you do this right, your doctor's going to be amazed. In fact, if you do it right, you're not even going to feel pain. Did you have a lot of pain from your first surgery? Uh, not, uh, not as not much. Too bad. I, I'm, I'm very thin. I uh, never carried weight, uh, so I, I don't well, get, have an issue. Get, work on that core. Work on that core. That's, that's super duper important. Have your chiropractor uh, family members help you with core exercises. Thanks for your call, sure. John. Appreciate it. Yeah, Gotta God go. Bless you. God bless you, my friend. Sorry, didn't mean to hang up on you there. And that is all the time we have for today. On the bright side, we'll continue talking fluoride and what you can do about it on our next bright side episode. And we're going to get into the other nasty chemical that's intentionally added to the water. Although this one is not as nasty as fluoride, and <clears throat> case could be made that it's more important for the water than fluoride. We'll talk about that in the coming days on the bright side. Thanks for listening. Please check out my websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com for all the longevity products, and truthtreatments.com for our Truth Skin Health products. Free shipping for the month of December. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.